Hi everybody, thank you for joining today. Today's video is going to focus on the actual screen frame support. This is the backbone of the whole acoustically transparent uh, screen as well as the panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through uh, the steps that actually went through to construct this, right? So basically, if you look at the uh, picture that's shown on the uh, corner right now, you will see the framing diagram, which is the eventual wall that I want to have created right and on top of the wall is where I want to mount the screen and the panels for the AT screen. So I'm going to explain to you step by step how I went through constructing the whole backbone. This will then be followed by the actual screen construction and the panel constructions. So as you're seeing the picture just shows you right now is first what I did was I put a base plate down on the floor. So the way the base plate was constructed was that the 2x4 was laid out across the uh, width of the room. Uh, the way it was laid down is that uh, it's a concrete floor. So for the concrete floor, what I had to do was basically drill into it. So for that, I got a separate masonry drill bit and then drilled the holes into the concrete using the masonry drill bit. Usually they recommended a separate type of drill for this, but I did not want to invest on a new drill given that I already have existing power tools. So I use the masonry bit to drill some holes into the concrete floor and then I use the Tapcon anchors. You get you get something called a Tapcon anchor which is specifically made or designed for getting through concrete. So I use them to basically uh, go into the holes that I drilled on the 2x4 on the floor. Before doing that what I did was I also put some wood glue on the 2x4 so that they are going to be fairly, fairly fixed to the floor. And then I put the Tapcon anchors and that's the way I did the uh, did the base plate right so we're looking at the space between the base plate and the rear wall this was actually the distance was based on the total uh, total depth of the JBL studio 590 speakers that I would have and added a little bit of buffer to that so the distance was based on that so once I did that the next picture actually shows you the top plate on the ceiling right so it's extremely important to get the base plate and the top plate parallel to each other uh, so I, given the length of, given the width of the room, I had to use two separate two by fours uh, to, to, to do this. So the most difficult part here was really aligning the top and the bottom plate, right? I went through a lot of difficulty, I had to redo this a number of times so that it was perfectly aligned to the uh, bottom plate uh, because it's not, it's completely disconnected, right? So getting a level across the top and the bottom piece was very difficult. Um, an easier way to do this would have been basically to use a laser uh, and mark the spot and then lay it out. But I didn't want to invest in something as sophisticated as that. So I just did the uh, uh, did the manual way of doing this, right? By laying a 2x4 on the wall and making sure that the bottom plate and the top plate are aligned to each other. And then drill the top plate into the, uh, into the, into the sheetrock. Now, one of the key things here on the top plate, if you looked at one of my previous videos, right, I would have shown you that before the sheet rock went up, I put the put, put some supports at the top. So basically, this is fairly easy to kind of anchor the uh, 2 by 4 for the top plate into the wall. Top and bottom plate are done. Now I've got to do the sides, side supports. So what you're seeing right now is the right side support where I basically run a 2x4 from the bottom from, from the bottom plate to the top plate. While doing this, if you're looking at it, I have two separate obstructions in the wall, so I had to go around them. So that's why you see you see the 2x4 broken at pieces, right? And it basically goes from the bottom to the top. Now on the left hand side, now if you're seeing that's another piece of 2x4 that I put on the left side. So if you focus carefully, you would see that the near the top there's actually a wedge on the wall. So I only went part way up, right? Basically the purpose of these two by fours are really to provide a support to the screen frames and the panels that come in front of it. So it's not absolutely essential that they need to run from the bottom to the top, although desirable to do that. But if you have obstructions, you've got to work around them. The next thing after this that you would see is um, a complete uh, frame, which has the top plate, the bottom plate, the right hand side and the left hand side. Now, after that, what I did was I put the uh, horizontal supports running from the bottom to the top uh, on the right side and the left side, right? Basically, the uh, reason this was put was actually to provide a, provide a backdrop or a support 
for the panels that are going to be mounted in front of them, right? So this is done then. So if you see the picture right now, it shows a complete frame. Now the next thing that needed to be done was I needed to have a opening carved out for my 120 inch screen. Um, the screen panel would come on top of this frame. So what I did was the top, if you're looking at the top piece there, uh, this is basically put together, assembled out of two by fours with vertical and horizontal supports. And this was anchored to the top plate and to the sides. The same thing you would see at the bottom as well. So if you look at the whole construction here, this is sufficient to support a 120 inch screen. Now, a couple of things that I've not shown on this video is that the top plate after I finished it, right, I felt it was very high. So then I had to revise it and take it out and move it down a little bit so that it could basically accommodate the uh, screen from a from a from a viewability perspective in the sense that I didn't want to ha have the screen up so high. So I had to reduce or lower it down a little bit, right? So so far, if you look at all the pictures that have come together, you would see that this offers a perfect and a stable backdrop to any of the panels that are going to come on next. In the next video, I'll explain to you how the screen was constructed and how, how the other panels are put together. But this video actually shows you an overview of how the whole backdrop or the support for the AT, for AT screen and its panels were constructed. Thank you.